Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you how I tackle long soft fur in pastels. The photo in the corner is the finished study and the full one hour version of this is available on my Patreon channel. All in real time, nothing sped up, so I speak you through every single process. All of the colours that I'm using are also explained as I'm using them, but as I mentioned in all my other videos, the exact colour is not important more so is your contrast your lights and your darks but i do give a full material list and tell you what pencils i'm using throughout but always remember when you're watching tutorials if you don't have that exact pencil someone is using pick up something similar in the set that you've got your version will be similar it will not be exact but you don't really want it to be exact you want your work to be your own so just pick something similar if you're using a different set to what is in a video regardless of what tutorial you are watching now my preferred way of putting my base layers down is using a bit of sandpaper and sanding down a selection of soft pastel sticks and then applying that pigment to my pastel matte paper. I have got some pan pastels that I have been trying out but at the moment this is still my preferred way of putting down my base layers. The biggest tip I can give you when you're drawing long fur is to make sure you match your pencil strokes accordingly. We need to be making sure that we are drawing those fur strokes at the correct length. Now the top part of this reference photo in the top right corner, the fur is far shorter than that at the bottom. So we have to make sure we adjust our pencil strokes accordingly to make sure we capture this fur type and the fur length. That's really important. Now the other thing is, I speak about it a lot in all my videos, I think my base layer and that process is very very important. It is your foundation for your detailed layers. More so when you're working on something like this with that long fur, you want it to be no, you know, there's no harsh lines. Everything is very soft and very blended. So therefore, make sure you spend that time on your base layers to make sure you get your color as exact as you can do at your base layer stage because everything needs to overlap. So it's really important to make sure you get this as accurate as you can and as blended as you can at that stage. You can see before I started adding these details, everything, my lights and my darks were correct and in the right place at that time. So that's really important and it's the biggest tip in capturing and replicating this very soft looking fur. And the main thing with colour is just to remember that if this photo of this dog was taken in slightly different lighting, the colour is gonna be different. So we all see colour differently as well. That's another thing to consider. But go for close it doesn't have to be 100 accurate just go for close and you can see just how many pencils that i'm using and how i layer so just pay really close attention to that reference photo try and notice whether or not it's a warm color or a cold color because that will certainly make a difference and help to pinpoint which pencils you need to use so something that it's worth doing if you do struggle with visualizing how long you should be making your pencil strokes is print out your reference photo the same size that your artwork is. So in this case, this was a four inch by six inch drawing. So if you wanted to do it the same size and the line art and the reference photo is provided on Patreon, then print your reference photo out to that same size. You'll then be able to see exactly how long you need to make your, your pencil strokes in that area that you're working on. Now, I personally like to use a tablet for my reference photo. I don't like printing it, mainly because printer ink is very expensive and the colour is never right. However, if you print it out, even if you printed it in black and white, it will still show you the size and the length of the pencil strokes that you need to be creating. So once I applied the entire base layer with my sanded soft pastel sticks, I then focus on smaller areas at one time, getting that about 80% complete before I move on to the next. I do this regardless of what portrait I'm working on. If you've seen the other videos here on YouTube, I like to break it up into very small manageable sections. I think that it makes it a lot more um, easier to tackle. Sometimes it can be a bit daunting, especially if you've got a full pet portrait or you're working on a wildlife piece. It can be really daunting in terms of where do you start? So I like to work on small areas, but in this case, because I needed everything to be blended and really soft, I did the entire base layer process at the same time. That was to make sure that I got everything in and soft as I needed it to be, because that's really crucial when you are drawing long soft fur like this. You can then break that down into smaller sections when you come to adding your detail, exactly like what I'm doing here. Now, when you're trying to create soft fur, the biggest tip I can give you when it comes to how to hold the pencil 
is apply hardly any pressure to that pencil. The more pressure you put on that pencil, the thicker your line is going to be. It will also pick up more of that texture in that tooth of the paper and give each first stroke more of a grainy effect, which is not what we want, especially if you are going for that softer look. So you want the lightest pressure. If you're wanting the colour and more pigment to show up, you can apply more pressure to that pencil. That's something that I do quite frequently, but not too much pressure so that you start to create some really thick lines. There is a difference and it starts to become easier to notice the more that you draw. But really you don't want thick lines that's really important when you're creating a fur type like this so really light pressure hold the pencil towards the end of the barrel or at least in the middle if you hold it closer to the lead you're more likely to put more pressure on that pencil and create thicker lines which is not what we're after in a fur type like this so I have a sheet of semi-translucent paper next to me that is glassine. I normally would have that across my drawing when I'm working on something larger. But given that this was only a four by six, I didn't have to, that my wrist wasn't in anywhere near the drawing as such. If it's something that you are concerned about and smudging with pastels is something that I do get asked quite a lot about. Put that glassine across the front of your drawing and move it around accordingly to make sure that your hand is never in contact with the pastels. Last weekend I uploaded a video specifically on how to avoid smudging, so if that's something that is of interest I'll put a little card in the corner. It covers everything that I do on a day to day basis every single time I do a portrait to make sure that I don't smudge any aspect of my artwork. So when you are drawing long fur, it's really important to make sure you follow that flow and direction of that fur that, and where it's travelling. This fur, you hear me speak about it before, that fur direction is not random. It follows the bone and muscular structure of that dog, which, yes, is 100% true. But when you're working on a long fur coated dog like this, where it's really, really dense, what you're actually seeing is more of that density of that fur. There is going to be on this part of the, the body here would be where the shoulder and the neck is. So there is going to be that muscular structure underneath. But this is because the fur is so thick in this area that it creates this roll effect, that wave effect of that fur. So it's really important to make sure that we capture that because it's that movement that's going to make it look that much more 3D. We really want to make sure that we capture the direction of that fur but also make sure we still get that softness. So that's really important. You'll see that I often use a paintbrush, which I use a lot in most of my portraits to soften out details. It's something that I find works really, really well. And it's a must have tool for me in my artwork. So here I'm using the white Caran d'Ache pencil. It is the whitest, brightest white that I have found. Mainly that way because it's got a softer lead, but that does also cause some problems. You've got to be careful with how sharp you make that point because they do break quite easily. If you've watched any of my other videos before, you'll know that I often find these little hard nuggets that are in the pencils. And I have just bought one of the, fortunately it was only one, of their pastel cues, which is just a pastel stick. And that was terrible. Hardly no pigment come out at all. I'm really glad I only bought the one because I will not be putting any more money towards the pastel sticks that they offer. I'm really happy with my Rembrandts. They're my main preference at the moment. So the white, the Chinese white is one of those pastel pencils of their range that I do make sure I've got a couple of because it is the brightest white in a pencil form that I have found. So here, this is why we need to make sure that the base layer was completely blended and it's all these details. There's no harsh lines and that's really important when we're drawing long, soft fur. I keep saying it, but it's really crucial to this study and that there's no harsh lines at any point. So we want to make sure that that base layer is really, really blended because when we come to add these details on top, it can all overlap each other. It's really, really important. And it's at this stage of the portrait that you can see why that base layer process is just so important. And something else that I will always do when I'm trying to create soft fur is I will soften out my pencil strokes and that will push them back closer towards the, the denser, thicker part of the base layers. And then I'll be then applying my pastel pencils on top to add even more detail. If I need to, I will soften them out again and repeat the process. What that does is it pushes back all those details and creates that much more softness because we don't want all of our details to always be really crisp when we're working on a fur type like this. 
that's why I've got my photo of the drawing in the corner rather than the reference photo because my DSLR has if you like too good of a quality it's made these pencil strokes appear too rigid whereas in the actual drawing it's far more softer so I hope this video and the few tips that I've shared have been useful. If it has, I'd really appreciate if you could give the video a thumbs up because it really does help. If you'd like to get notified of future content, hit the subscribe button and the bell button and you should then get a little pop-up pop notification when I next upload a video. And if any real-time and considerably slower tutorials are of use, I've actually got a Patreon library over on my website where all of the tutorial thumbnails are listed so you can see exactly what tutorials I offer on my Patreon. They're all clearly listed out, broken up into full-length portraits. So if you want to start something from you know the beginning right through till the end, I've then got focus videos such as this and then bonus content and tutorials as well. So I will link my Patreon in the description below, but if you've got any questions about anything, don't hesitate to drop me an email, drop me a message on social media and I will get back to you. Thank you for watching.